I may or may not have ordered 46 chickens today. We have definitely had a busy week here after busted pipes, getting pipes fixed, going back to work Monday. Um, Monday, the ground was still way too wet for our fence guys to come out, but they did come out on Tuesday and they've started putting our fences up and I'm so excited to see their progress. It's Friday. They've been working very hard for four days. We have the best fence guys out here just working their tails off all day long for the past four days. So hopefully they'll take a little time off this weekend. We'll get the cows moved back to the front and they can finish this next week, at least the first part of next week. So I can't wait to show you our progress. So you may or may not recall in a few of my videos, I've referenced that Daryl has changed our garden plans and when I say that, I don't mean that in a negative way. He has given me a gift. And when we first moved out here, one of our goals was for him to be allowed more opportunity and time to be home. Um, and also to build our house and our barn and our fences the way that we need so that it would fit our life and what we were trying to accomplish here. So. April of 2020, obviously we moved in, middle of pandemic. We started, I had, I think I had most of the kids here. So we had three or four capable helpers. Paxton was still pretty young. They helped me build about 150 square feet of growing space, one long bed out in the front yard. I did do some gardening in the backyard that first year before we got Chunk, our Pyrenees. And since then, Chunk has some bad habits. He's still living in the backyard. He's getting better. So my goal is to get him out of the backyard so we can turn that into a, a nice place to hang out again. But everything I was growing back there, I had to move to the front. So the second season came around and the kids helped me and my friends, several of my friends came over and helped me. Put in four raised beds and so that increased my growing space to about 300 square feet. September 11th 2021. I'm getting about six maybe a week of those enough that I'm sharing because I don't there's one baby pumpkin we'll see if it comes up it's like they all die before they're ready. The mint and the oregano, those beautiful little oranges. I'm trying to let these go to seed so we can harvest those seeds. This one, hopefully, soon we'll get some seeds from that one. And our pink ones, doing beautifully, girls. Thank you for bringing so much joy. And then our little strawberries, we've only got one, two, three, it looks like three that have survived. But granted being in that pot, I think we're doing pretty good. The parsley, some Greek oregano down here, and then that basil's doing amazing. We're going to have some basil pesto here shortly. Got to get my recipes together and have a kitchen day. Um, these little cone flowers and zinnias, all of them have... Just really been beautiful this year. And this week we've been able to get our cherries in the ground. I'm gonna give you a long view here. Cherries in the ground here. Um, these are the early prolific yellow squashes. I'm gonna have to pick, kind of 
narrow them down. I've got three of each, three of those, and three of our gray zucchinis, which two of them are looking awesome. I got some tomatoes over here in the ground. Um, this one is a cherry. And then this one over here is um, a Juliet, which is a little bit longer, almost Roma looking. And little banana peppers. And then we've got sweet bells. This is the only potato plant that's growing. I think it's a potato, it may not be a potato plant, but it's the only one out of all of those bags that came up. Um, eventually this will be another eggplant bed and probably some more tomatoes on this side of things. Right now we just have flowers. And then our lavinias. And we've got, you can't see one of them, but we've got three little green bean plants right now. I had hoped that my noodle beans would come up here, but they still are looking pretty pitiful. So um, Pax and I are gonna troubleshoot that. And over here is our spinach and lettuces, which something ate all the lettuces, but the spinach is still somewhat coming up. And then on that far side, on the left, I've had to replant something ate it, the um, hybrid of our <laughs> cucumbers. But that middle one is our straight eight cucumber and the far right is our heirloom cucumber. And then over here, we had planted cucumelons in this uh, little row. And again, I think a bird is coming in and eating my little seedlings. Um, I had a lot of lettuce and uh, basil over here that's no longer coming up. And um, just these little mi microgreens right now. Um, but we are getting a little bit of leaf lettuce, it looks like, and um, having to pick out a lot of mushrooms. So we'll get it figured out. And then over here, Paxson's baby zinnias. And uh, today we're going to replant some. Uh, we're going to replant some sunflower seeds that never came up because I think Sweet Boy likes to plant things deep. And that's what we put our fall garden in. And then after the fall garden, as those vegetables started dying, as the, as the frost started affecting them, as they stopped producing, I started pulling those plants. But I still knew that I wanted onions, I wanted garlic, I wanted dahlias, I wanted some peonies. I even ordered some ranunculus. I wanted to see how I would do with some of these flowers, but more because they're beautiful and I wanted to see if I was capable of growing them. I think everything here for me is an experiment, but it's fun. And I would read and study and figure out what would grow. So as the fall harvest started to die off, I started buying the tubers and the, I don't even know what they're called. Are they, I don't know what the ranunculus are called. They Corms. They look like little claws. Um, and I started planting those things in the early fall because that actually gives them time to settle in and then it gives them time that they harden off kind of in the winter. They get that frost and that cool weather that they need and then in the spring it's it's never so cold here that it would kill them and then in the spring they would come up. So he approached me and said I think it's time for us to start moving the fences like we talked about but I wanted to ask you can we move the garden? And if, initially, I, I, I didn't want to move the garden. We've worked really hard. I know it's not much to look at, but we've worked really hard to create that space. And so my eyes got big. He's like, hear me out. I have a space behind the house where I want to put the garden. And so he started showing it. And I know my eyes got even bigger because I've been growing in 300 square feet of growing space. And now the area that he is fencing off for me is six is 6,000 square feet. Six. 6,000. That's bigger than I could imagine me trying to grow. And he said, I'm gonna help. We'll, we'll move things as we need to. And I said, well, I have flowers that are coming up in the spring, so we're not touching these beds. <laughs> we're not gonna do anything yet. So for now, we're leaving those beds there. I do have my green stalks out there. I do have blackberry bush boxes that we had built and started to fill with soil. And it still needs extra soil. It still needs compost, still needs amended. So what we'll do is we'll, that will be one of the first things that we do move over into um, the new garden area. But 
that's one of the big projects that these young gentlemen who have been here working so hard this week, that is one of the projects they've been doing is putting in um, really solid, beautiful fences that's going to protect my garden from those cows, protect my garden from the deer, protect my garden hopefully from bunnies. And um, that leads me to my next thing is I may or may not have ordered 46 chickens today. I have not told my husband yet. So I knew we've talked about, he's agreed. He's not excited, but he's agreed. Um, I would like to start growing and processing our own meat birds. So I the company I originally planned to order my Cornish cross with, when I got online last night, their, their soonest postage date or shipping date would be June 1st. Texas is hot in the summer, hot. So if they arrived June 1st, if it wasn't too hot and they died in transit, by the time they were eight weeks old and it was time to harvest, time to process, we would be working outside in the heat if they even survived the heat. So that's a no-go. That company also has hatching eggs. And I've been for the past nine months looking at the Easter Eggers and the Olive Easter Eggers. And we, we bought secondhand an incubator from someone that I trust. And I've been talking to my son's teacher about, hey, how do you feel about hatching some eggs? They are the gateway animal to farming. And that was what piqued my interest as a child, was watching a chicken hatch out of an egg and raising this little bird from a hatchling. And so, she is on board, she's super excited. Um, she's trying to get it passed with administration right now. Um, there's always red tape when you bring animals and uh, poultry into the school. But, so I ordered 22 little eggs to go in the incubators and they should be here in the next two weeks. So a slight update to that. When I went to pick Paxton up at school today, the teacher did say admin had said yes, the kids could watch the babies be hatched. They were not allowed to touch them once they hatched. And then it occurred to me, when is spring break? So <laughs> I don't plan ahead. So I called the hatchery and just asked, hey, can you move my, my shipping date back a week? They gave me the shipping date of March 1st, which means they will come sometime that week. And then after March 1st, so sometime between the 1st and the really the third and the fifth probably they'll arrive and then that next like either that weekend or that next week we get them in the incubators so that would give them three weeks and we would not be hatching eggs on spring break because that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish here what's really funny is when I said to the teacher I ordered the eggs today they're gonna hatch on spring break she started laughing she said that happened last year with the monarch butterfly <laughs> So I'm glad I'm not the only one that can't plan these things. <laughs> so just an update. And it was so easy. Meyer Hatchery. I mean, I, I say I called. I actually sent an email and just said, is there any way you can move my shipping date back? And within minutes had a response. Yes, March 1st. Just like that. Just simple. And they did such a great job with our guineas when they were babies um, shipping them to us. So I'm really looking forward to these eggs and just to the whole process. The other thing I went to a different site. I did go to Murray McMurray and they did have shipping days on the Cornish Cross chickens that we're looking at. So I ordered 12 Cornish Cross chickens and then they also had some bantons and silkies and really fun chickens and then some laying hens that I knew that I wanted. So I was, um, A little bit excited and spent my Valentine's money today but so we will have if everything works out at least 40 to 45 chickens in the next month um, <laughs> here on the farm so one of my plans would be to take half of my garden 
and to have the chickens really work that soil over. Um, there's already manure back there because the cows have been, that's one of the areas the cows like to hang out in. So there's manure there. The chickens will have plenty of work to do and I can kind of move them around and prepare that soil for the fall. And then the other half of the garden I can use in the spring for our spring garden and really start working um, with that soil. It's good soil. It's already, it's, it's had cattle on it for years. Um, it may need a little bit of amendment. I'm gonna send some samples in as soon as the guys are done building the fence or this weekend when I get out there and dig holes. But um, I just wanted to share that with you. Good things coming, big giant garden, whole bunch of chickens. I will go through that process with you with the incubators and with raising the chickens. But they had order dates for today. Like I could, well, Monday the 14th. But what I wanted was I wanted some time. I need about a week, at least a week, to get brooders ready, to make sure that all my heating lamps are ready, to make sure I've got the waterers and the feeding, um, I call them feeding apparatuses. Um, we have found certain things work better than others with the chicks. And so I wanna make sure that I'm prepared before they get here because basically I will get a call from the post office that morning and I will load my car and go get those babies and eggs. So that's how that works. And I'm super excited. I can't wait to share this experience with you guys. So this is progress today. Got the fence up. I'm gonna show you all the work that they do. Like these guys are welding these fences, which is beautiful. Um, even not their posts, it's just right there. That is the entire garden right there. It's the 6,000 square feet. This is their next big fence line. It wasn't windy till I came out here, I'm sure. These guys have worked so stinking hard and done so much in the little bit of time that they've been out here. I mean, they've been out here a lot, but four days to completely do all of this. So this completely wraps around here behind the barn. And then Daryl had asked them to put in poles for us to have another fence, another pen back here. So this is right off the barn, right off the barn. There's this extra pen on right adjacent to the pen that they're already in. And it looks like we need hay. I'm having to do a night watch on this dog so these sweet guys are out here working hard trying to fix my fence for the garden and one of the little plastic sheetings come on this side of the fence and mr chunk man can you say hi this is all my trash this is all the junk every time they get close he'd pull whatever they had through the fence so poor garrett says he's missing a pair of pliers because that dog got his hands through the fence chunk are we supposed to do that? With these guys down here working, I haven't wanted to bother them too much. I've kind of left the cows alone the last couple days other than here and there in the nights. What are y'all doing? Thank you for joining us. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy this beautiful weather, especially my fellow Texans. We are being blessed right now with some pretty incredible weather pre-spring.